Hi, I'm Sakaya Blackburn. I'm the owner of Sunread Instruments and the director of the Center of Light Institute of Sound Healing and Shamanic Studies. For close to 40 years, I've worked with musical instruments of the world, as well as learning techniques of sound healing and shamanic practice as utilized by indigenous and other cultures throughout the world. And I'd like to share with you some about different instruments and tools that we utilize in sound healing and shamanic practices. I'm going to begin with the Native American drum and just walk you through different um, aspects of how you might select, use, and care for different types of frame drums. Again, I'm starting with the Native American drum, which uh, is fashioned in, in, our, uh, in our work, is fashioned by traditional makers of uh, Native American traditions, and uh, they utilize traditional prayer and ceremony in their practice. We use only drum makers who make very well-made drums that hold up in a high, degree, high uh, amount of weather conditions and other things like that, which are all important to understand. If I were to just simply say to you which drum I would tend to select, I would look at the 18-inch elkskin drum. It's beautifully crafted. It's, full, it's got a full wrap. It's made with extra strapping to help protect your hand for, for grasping it and so forth. Uh, every aspect of the drums are made with, with care and with uh, wisdom within them. For instance, the lace pattern on the back of our drums has the four directions, but it also has two extra ties that honor the balance of male and female that occurs within each of the, the directions and all that that stands for. The drums are used very simply, and just a, a soft rhythm is a good way to start with the drum. You want to look at the size, the skin, and all the characteristics of each drum can change the quality or nature of the sound. That's one of the reasons that we like to work with elk skin, because it has a good continuity between many different drums, and it, it uh, responds well under many different weather conditions. Now, I'm just going to show you two different elk skin drums, because you can see that each one has slightly different coloration and so forth to the skin, and that's unique to each drum. It's just simply the way uh, that the skins come out. And it's one of the things that we really appreciate about that. When you're choosing a Native American drum, you're also working with the medicine of the animal. And for those that work from a more shamanic practice, uh, that understanding can, can bring um, a, a, a quality to your work with the drum that's very beneficial. For those that that's not important to, then, then it literally is not such an important thing to, to work with. But that might influence your decision in choosing a skin made from elk or buffalo or moose or horse or one of the other medicine animals. And where those drums are not listed on our site, you can always ask which drums are available. I like the 18-inch because it's a nice whole sound, and if I just played it for a moment, you can tell that. And this is a very soft beater that I'm using right now. If I were to pick up one of the more traditional um, beaters that this one has a lacing on it, it's going to be a little bit harder and have a different quality to sound also. The primary difference in the drums and the size is just that the smaller the drum is, the higher the pitch or voice of the drum will be. So that was the voice of an 18-inch drum. If I were to pick up a 16-inch drum, the drum itself looks basically the same. It's laced in the same way. It has the same full wrap around it and so forth. But the voice of it is going to be a little bit different. And you can hear it's a little higher and sharper in sound. So the first was the 18 inch, that's a 16 inch. Uh, the next one that I have is a 15 inch, I just have a couple more of this type of drum to show you. But just so you can hear the difference in sound, that's the primary difference of what you get by selecting different size drums. That's the 15 inch and then the 13 inch is the smallest that I have here today to show you. Now the voice on this one is very different than the other ones, and that's because today here in Vermont it's very humid. We have a, a strong warm front that's moved through, and the humidity in the weather changes and alters uh, the quality of the voice of the skin. This particular one, for, for reasons unique to itself, absorbs the moisture a little bit more than the other drums, so it's a little softer, um, softer in the voice, and at some point, if it got really, really humid, uh, the skin of the drums can absorb so much moisture that they will soften completely and not play well. That can be remedied very easily by just simply placing them in the sun or putting them next to a heat source such as a hot lamp 
a heater. Uh, people even blow dry them with a hair dryer, putting them near a fire. When you do that, you want to be sure you don't overheat the skin. You want to think of this skin much like your own skin. And if, if you can withstand the heat easily, then this can. But if it's too hot for you, it's probably too hot for the drum also. And that's something to think of. Conversely, in the winter, the skins dry out very much, and they may get to make a very sharp sound. And if they make sound that's too sharp, then you may want to um, just pour a, a few drops of water on the skin and rub it over the head of the drum several times. And if you do that two to four times over a 10 or 15 minute period, the skin will soften enough that you have a very nice sound. All of these other drums, I like the way that the voice is on them right now, even in the humid conditions that we're in today. Again, this is the 18-inch drum. It has a nice, full, rich, vibrant sound. That's about the way that I like my drums to sound. And a lot of it is just up to you and your own uh, perceptions of what you like the sound to be. So if you like the 18 or the 16 or the 15-inch sound, that's as good of a reason as any to pick that size. One other factor that you want to think about is the weight of the drum. And if you're going to use it for a long time in ceremony or performance or ritual and so forth, you're holding it for a long time, and the 18-inch is a larger drum. It's going to weigh more, and if you have a smaller frame than I, then that's something you may want to consider, that, that it may just get tiresome to hold up the drum for a long time, and that alone is also a reason to choose perhaps a 16 or 15-inch drum. I'm going to go through the sounds of these three drums just one more time, the 18-inch first. So you can hear the difference in that. And then the 16-inch. and then the 15 inch. So you can hear there's very little difference between the 15 and 16 inch while there's a significantly, um, there's a significant difference between the 16 and 18, but they all sound fairly similar. Those are the primary things you want to think about is size, weight, how, how you want to handle them, and the voice quality of them. Now each different skin may have a different quality of voice. For instance, moose and buffalo are slightly thicker in skin than elk, and they'll have a thicker uh, or so, uh, a deeper, richer sound in general than the elk would have, whereas deer is a thinner skin and will be a slightly higher pitch sound in general. Now, if you live in really, really humid conditions, like in, in southern Florida uh, or someplace like that, sometimes you're in places where you, you can't use the natural skin drums well enough, and you may want to skin or uh, consider an alternative. And the best alternative that we found are the Remo drums, and these are listed uh, on our site under the frame drum section also. The Remo drum um, is made from man-made material. It's, it's um, a, a special type of skin made by the Remo Drum Company. And they call these buffalo drums because they're made to imitate the style of the Native American drum. Now, if you're um, really uh, affixed to the traditional quality of a Native American drum or to the medicine quality of the drum, then you may not want to even consider a drum like this. Uh, but for instance, I work a lot outdoors, and there are times when I'm in ceremony for extended periods of time in very humid conditions, in rainstorms and so forth, and I will consider using these drums uh, during those times because I like the voice quality, and because they are, they're a man-made uh, synthetic material, they will never change the voice quality. They will always uphold the type of voice that they have when you hear them in dry conditions, in humid conditions, in wet conditions, in cold or warm conditions. It, it, it makes extremely little difference. The drums maintain the quality of sound they have at all times. So here's a 16-inch Remo Buffalo drum. Another one that I have is a 22-inch Remo. This is one of the drums that I like and use quite a bit because it has a very uh, deep, dark sound, a very vibrant sound. And when I do work with shamanic journey practices, this just carries us uh, in a very good way, though I can get larger skinned Native American style drums and, and do very similar with this. Another type of drum that I want to share with you today is uh, our Pakistani shamanic drums. And these are called Pakistani drums because they're made in Pakistan. 
they're more manufactured than handmade. On the traditional drums, these are hand laced drums. There's a lot of labor involved in the making of these drums from the skin, the, the um, um, from skinning the animal and tanning the hide to the, cutting the lace and tying the lace. It's a, it's a very time intensive production and it's done here in the North American continent, whereas these are done in a third world culture and um, they're more machine manufactured in the process of making them, so they're, they're much less expensive. But they do have a good voice quality and that's something to consider. They're made from goat skin and they're, they're glued instead of laced and are glued in a way in which they keep tightness throughout a lot of humid conditions. So that is something to consider and it is uh, an alternative uh, to the traditional Native American drums which also are uh, more expensive. So here's an 18 inch uh, Pakistani frame drum. So you can hear the difference in this in a larger one. This is a 22 inch drum and I use these up to 30 inch sizes and actually enjoy them quite a bit. You can hear that this is a very much deeper vibrant sound now. And these do have a crosshair though they're, they're, the lacing here is a little bit sharper than the traditional ones that have the extra wrapping. You hold these for a long time, they, they make it get a little uncomfortable, but you can wrap these yourself with an extra material to soften that. Uh, they are a very good alternative to consider though. Now also, one of the things that I want to bring to your attention is just this simple drumming pattern that I'm doing. Uh, the elders who taught me suggested that there are two primary drum beats uh, in their tradition, and one is, is um, called the honor beat, and it's just a simple one-one beat. The other beat is called the heartbeat, and it's it's a one-two beat. It goes like this. Much like our heart. And in that beat, we're honoring both the Mother Earth and the Father Sky. So the honor beat is what I primarily use, which is just this one-one beat. Some people take that and they, they, they hear Native Americans drumming and they think that it's a 4-4 a, a four, four count because there's an act the way that it's accented. Somewhat like that, but I'm playing with that accent a little bit. What I've done is take the honor beat, which is just this 1-1 one, one beat, and it can go at any tempo. So I take out the fourth count of that beat. So I, if I was counting 1, 2, 3, 4, I just take out that four count. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, for a unique uh, beat which people really enjoy in the practices that we do. So this is a look at some of the basic drums that we have. I've gone through the traditional Native American drums. I've used the elk skin drums to demonstrate now, just not confuse you with so many choices. It's uh, our recommendation because it's just a good choice throughout most of North America. The elk skin will hold up well. Uh, these are tied and laced very well to where they hold up under uh, conditions as well as any traditional Native American drum that I've seen. Our maker is very good at that, as is our Apache maker. She also makes very, very well, well done drums. Uh, I've used the Remo drums, which are made from a synthetic material, and uh, I would recommend for those uh, that are concerned about being in very high humid conditions or using them in sweat lodges. This also will work very well because they will not get moist, they won't absorb the moisture, they won't uh, become loose. Uh, we do offer uh, Native American traditional drums that are designed specifically for the sweat lodge and you can look at those at our site as well as the larger powwow drums which I'm not covering today. But I've showed you the Remo buffalo drums and then the Pakistani style uh, shaman drums also. These are all good choices. If I had one drum to choose I would choose the 18 inch elk skin drum. If I was a smaller frame person I might consider the 16 inch 
frame drum. And if you want to learn more about the use of these, um, please visit our website, call us up, email us if you have other questions about your selections. We are very knowledgeable about the drums because we use them all the time in our life and practices, and we deeply honor the native traditions from which uh, these drums have come. We have been engaged in these types of practices, as I said, for, for several decades, and I also conduct trainings about the use and care of the instruments. And you can visit our website linked through sunread.com, uh, the Center of Light website, to look at the trainings on sound, sound healing and shamanic studies. We hope we can help you more. Give us a, a call, give us an email. We'll be glad to help with your questions. Thank you very much.